Gonzalo said water's the lifeblood of Southern Alberta. It really is true. If we don't have the water out there, uh, we're not gonna grow what we're growing here today. There is a fear that with ongoing socioeconomic development and possibly climate change, that, that the water supply that's available for irrigation will drop. At the same time, there's a desire to expand the irrigation system. We're looking at trade-offs in the irrigation sector over the next 25 years. One of the key questions we're going to attempt to address is what is the effect of an expansion in that irrigation area? If irrigation continues to expand, what are the implications for, for the larger society? And if the larger society requires a lot more water because of population growth and economic development and so on, what are the implications for, for the irrigation sector? One of the things that excites me about this project is that it really is a perfect application for, for systems modeling. It has all of the, the key aspects of sustainability that work best with this type of methodology. So we have economic factors, we have social factors, and we have environmental factors. And we have a huge number of decisions that, that we need to weigh, so we need uh, an approach that allows us to accomplish that. We get to write our own ticket to the future to a large degree based on the choices that we make today. But I think this is the time, really, in Western Canada and even in Alberta, for agriculture to start to become a real important producer for the province from an economic point of view. There have also been recent studies that suggest that that most countries will not be able to export significant amounts of food in the next sort of 20 or 30 years at the same time that demands for food globally are, are really on the rise. Uh, Canada is one of the exceptions. We have a good history and culture in southern Alberta of adapting to these demands. Now we actually have a chance to step out in front of the demand, develop the technologies and processes so that as this global demand builds, we're not going to have to be playing catch up from a science and technology point of view. We'll be ready to meet the demand. If we do all of this together, we're gonna to have water for growing populations. We'll be able to manage water to achieve specific environmental outcomes. And the water that is there for economic value in agriculture and other industries is not only just going to increase in value, it's gonna produce increased value, which I think if you kind of look at it, we could be in a situation where this is a win-win-win for people, for the environment, and for the economy.